Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone's feeling good. And I am just honored right here. You see, mm -hmm. and my sister Faladay is right here with me. And Faladay, mm -hmm. can you please explain how you will handle a seizure if you see one? Hey, everyone. So, yeah, it's great to be here. Good to see you, Afi. Yeah, this is great. So, um, a seizure. So, I will say, you know, in the beginning, like one of the first times when you first see a seizure, it can be a little confusing, right? You know, sometimes people say, is it alarming? Is it shocking? It's not, to me, personally, it's not as alarming as it is kind of confusing. So I know everyone has different types of seizures. And the type, you know, how Afi, so Afi does a lot of twirling or spinning, sometimes walking off. So it doesn't seem, it seems scattered. Like, you know, it's like, what is, what's this lady doing? You don't know what she's doing. It doesn't come across as a seizure right away. So that's why I say it's confusing. It just seems like, oh, this is some weird, strange behavior, what's going on. So I think, you know, in the beginning, it just takes like, you know, taking some time just to kind of gather yourself and say, oh, it looks like something's wrong, you know? And then, you know, I guess kind of monitoring the situation. If you don't know the person, you know, trying to see if they're with somebody else, you know, maybe helping to make sure that they don't fall and just managing where they are. So I think, you know, I'm, I've, I've only experienced a seizure with you and I know you. Mm -hmm. So um, that is a little bit of a difference than if you're a stranger. I have never in my um, life at this point encountered anybody else having a seizure outside of you. So I've never encountered a stranger having a seizure. So yeah. my perspective is a little bit different, you know, <laughs> than that one. But you know how to handle the complex partials. It's more like a sleepwalk for me, right? <laughs> I mean, it's a sleep, maybe a sleepwalk for you, but on our end, it's not like a sleepwalk because you're doing a lot of, you know, wrestling or sometimes you're falling over and you're moving or sometimes you're trying to get away. You know, it varies, you know, maybe depending on the time of day or what you've been doing. Um, so it's not like it's like, oh, hey, she's sleepwalking. Let me just guide her back. No, you're like doing things. So, you know, that's why I'm saying if it is somebody who doesn't know you, it feels a little bit, you know, personal because a lot of times people don't like to get in people's personal space. So when you are trying to be helpful, I think it's good to kind of, you know, have your hands, you know, wide and what you're ma basically trying to do is try to make sure that the person doesn't hurt themselves. I think that's the most important thing because we know you or our family, you know, myself included, um, know you, we have more of a, you know, ability to feel like we can, you know, obviously touch you or stop you or say, Hey, 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 let's make sure she's okay. You know, for a stranger, you know, it might feel a little bit uncomfortable because you don't know the person and you want to make sure that, you know, they're are actually in some kind of need, some kind of help. Um, but yeah, I think the most important thing to keep in mind there is just that we want the person to not hurt themselves. That's a good point. That's why the stranger, the other stranger called it a sleepwalk to me when he saw me. But that's why the medical ID bracelet is critical. Because when you guys see this bracelet here, you'll have the number of the folks who call. Because don't call 911. <laughs> Any seizure five minutes and under is not an emergency. So come on. It's no big deal. <laughs> Bobby, did you ever have an experience with a person um, who didn't have a seizure, like another health um, situation, like when you were somewhere else, did um, somebody else ever have a, a weird situation that you had to handle? Um, I can't say that I've ever encountered anyone who needed my help. Yeah. So, no, um, I, I guess because I've journeyed with you for most of my life, so... I'm still helping you. So I don't, I've never really encountered anybody, you know, in my day to day that needed any help. I'm trying to recall. Right. Or seeing or any situation call. I've come upon where people were already there. So I, no one where I was like alone or somebody was like, oh, wait, something going on. Oh, you on. saw one though? But you saw one? A seizure? No, no, no. I'm Not right. a seizure. I'm saying you saw another situation. I'm saying. Yeah, I, no, I, like I've come across a, a car accident or something. You know, right. somebody, you know, had been in an accident. There's people there. Nothing. I'm not sure what you're looking for, but I haven't really come across. I'm just saying another one for people to understand how they could just, they, they're seeing other people handle that one smoothly so they can just hold on. 
So that's a cool thing. And a lot of people um just are fearful about the idea <laughs> about the seizure. But um, but yeah, it's just that, that you had the um situation so much. But um, but once people, the folks who have never experienced one, um, what would you tell them about seizures? Like, you know, to, to not be so worried about it, like, you know, because they're not gonna be hurt, right? I mean, um, I mean, I think it's always important, like I said, you want to make sure that somebody needs help, you know, and to make sure that they're, you know, not harming themselves. Again, with seizures, seizures are also different. I've only experienced your particular seizures. Um, and, you know, it, it involves making sure that you don't go in the street or, fall down or hit yourself or hit your head so it can be kind of hands-on um so that's why I was saying I think the most important for thing for people to keep in mind is um Zadie go sit down is to sorry everyone that's my daughter is to um just make sure that the person is safe that the person um you know, is not going to hurt themselves. So I'm not, I don't know what you mean by a big deal. I think anything that seems like it could be an emergency should always treat it like it's a big deal. Um, I think what you're trying to say is um, you, that we can, you know, passerby is probably can help potentially prior to maybe calling 911 right away. Um, but yeah, I just think making sure that that person is safe, you know, not hurting themselves. Maybe once they come back, you know, it, it takes, it's about a five to six, five to eight minute um, process of helping, you know. So I would say just being patient and, you know, kind and having the compassion to hang around for maybe, you know, 10 minutes of your day that you see somebody may need some help. And you say, let me just spare 10 minutes to make sure that everything is okay um, so that you can, you know, hopefully maybe guide them back. Maybe if they come back, they may, you'll see, I think it's a lot of observation. Once you're observing them, that they're not quite conscious. This is unconscious behavior. And once they come back to consciousness in a few minutes, then hopefully you'll be able to suss out the situation more and, and say, again, that part is also a little tricky because, you know, it takes a minute for you to come back for you to even remember where you are, what happened, you lose memory in, in that time. And over time, um, as this has gone on, your memory has gotten, you know, unfortunately, you know, a little bit worse. So again, there's more patience just to say, hey, are you okay? It looked like something was wrong because sometimes you might not be able to name it. A person might not know that it's a seizure, but hearing, you know, just saying like, are you okay? Is everything okay? It seemed like you were you didn't know what was going on. Just wanted to check in with you. So I think that's the most important thing. Just having the language to ask someone, hey, are you okay? Is everything okay? This is where you are right now. Is this where you're supposed to be? Those kind of questions. Because again, a person who has a seizure, they can't be like, oh, hey, I just had a seizure and this is what happened. They don't have the ability to do that. You know, they, you know, have lost a lot of their memory. You know, it just depends. So I just think making sure that the person is okay, saying, hey, we're, we're here on Slauson and La Brea. Were you supposed to be right here? I hope everything is okay. Do you have all your things? You know, making sure they have all their belongings, that they feel safe, and that, you know, do you need me to call anyone? You know, you can ask them if they would like you to call further for help, you know, for 911. You have had injuries where you sustained an injury from a fall and then you did need extra assistance. And so that has happened for you before. Excuse me, Zadie, we're doing, me and your honor during the meeting. Can you please wait? She's asked you to stop. I'm asking to stop. Um, so, yeah, so that, you know, those kinds of things have, um, I would say those are the type of things just to keep in mind, you know, probably for any situation, just kind of be observant, patient, compassionate, kind, and making sure that the person is, um, can, I have can you please be quiet right now is, is alert and, and, and okay in the moment. I feel like 
that's the whole thing. I'm just trying to get more people to just be aware of that and how they can just be relaxed and compassionate. And, you know, like you said, so you just keep that loving heart and everything. So more people can be like you because you're like, oh, OK, it's no big deal. And aren't you getting ready, looking forward to Sunday? Well, you know, I would say it's no big deal to help. No big deal to make sure that someone's safe. Not that what's happening is not a big deal, but it's no big deal to say, hey, let me take five, 10 minutes to stop and make sure this person's okay. So yeah, I better wrap it up soon. Yeah, we're looking forward to, to Sunday's walk. We're very excited about it. Whole family's gonna come out. This is something that we look forward to. Um, yeah, I can't wait. Well, that's critical and important. And I just love it when we all just um, have the fun um, vibe over there and everything. I'm just trying to share that one to get folks to see. It's going to be right here on oh, April 28th, so not Sunday. That's this Sunday at the Rose Bowl. Yes, we we're going to be partying very, very, very And we're going to all have that um, loving vibe where you're going to meet all the folks the same way. Everybody goes to the breast or the diabetes oh. walk. We can just get the whole, which is great. And so we want as many epilepsy. people to come to the epilepsy walk as well. Yeah. Just same yeah. amount just to come out for us as well. Yeah. <laughs> big party, big party that we'll be having. So it's a great one. Well, okay, sister. Thanks for joining. Thanks. Us. Thanks for having the patience for us and, and your niece. All right, everyone. <laughs> Take care. See you Bye. Sunday. <laughs>